Hey guys, welcome to the Quick Talk Podcast, the only show handcrafted for small business entrepreneurs looking to explode their business. It's time to get your mind right so you can get your grind right. Are you ready? The majority of people that go out of business each year, it doesn't happen because they left some streaks and they weren't a great window cleaner. It happens because they suck at business. Hey, everybody. My name is Joshua Latimer. Welcome to the Quick Talk Business Podcast, where my job is to deliver you, the listener, actionable, real-life business insights that you can apply to your business immediately after listening to this episode. Today, I'm joined by Chris Lambernini's. Now, for all of the guys that have been listening to all of these podcast episodes, you'll notice that he is a re- he's my first repeat guest, which... I've only, I only have like 16 podcasts out or something. So that's crazy. But the reason I brought him back is because first of all, he's the number one listened to episode I've ever done. And he was only like the second or third one that I released. So people just keep listening to his interview and the download numbers are crazy. And number two, he has some new things that we're going to be able to talk about. So Chris has a crazy story. He's from New Jersey. He started a cleaning business with nothing as a young kid and he grew it doing, I mean, crazy revenue. They did, they did 3 million a year. I mean, these guys are doing two, 300,000 a month in cleaning. It's, it's really, truly a, a, a great story because I know Chris personally, super humble guy, doesn't like to talk about this. I have to strong arm, arm him to let me talk about it because he really, he's just like you and me, but he's done some things in his business that really blew the ceiling off the thing. And I'm just excited I convinced you, Chris, to let me interview you again. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Josh. Thanks for having me back. I really appreciate it. I, I love to hear that on the the most listened to and downloaded episode. That's great. It is. It is. <laughs> and you never know. You never know how it's going to go. Like sometimes I'll do an interview and I'm like, that was amazing. And I'm super pumped and it doesn't resonate as well with people as I thought. And other ones, you, you just don't know. But it's been out there now for several months and people from all over the world have listened to your episode. I mean, the cleaning business is a hard business to scale for a lot of reasons. But you figured it out. How did you figure it out, Chris? Persistence, time, analytics, data, um, but mostly just the, the drive not to give up. <clears throat> You're right. The cleaning, biz- cleaning businesses in general are extremely hard to scale because they're labor dependent. And for the most part, uh, a cleaning business is, is close to a commodity. You can only charge so much for it. Therefore, you can only pay your labor so much. It eventually tops out. And, you know, people don't scale as well as products on a shelf or a digital product. Uh, so it can be, you know, pretty difficult. Yeah, I agree. And when you have people going inside customers' homes, especially really nice homes, there's there's all these little nuances to the way that specifically window cleaning is. I mean, you're taking staff members and they're in the bedroom of a $2 million house and like there has to be accountability and then there's personality stuff and what do they look like? What do they smell like? How, how's their grooming? But that's fine on a small level. But when you get up to 30, 40, 50, 80, 100 employees, it can be difficult to keep a handle on all that stuff, right? Yeah, it's super scary. I, uh, I heard an expression years ago that it, it always stuck with me. It said everybody in their personal life has basically two problems a week. And when you're an employer – those employees' problems essentially become yours. So if you have 50 employees, you have an extra 100 problems on your hands per week. Uh, every, everybody's going through a crisis. Everybody's got something going on. So it's uh, dealing with a lot of personalities and a lot of problems. Oh, that's very true. And I've never heard that before, but that's a really, really cool insight because I know for me, when we got up to about 20 employees or so, it was almost a weekly occurrence where someone needed their paycheck early or they were having a cash flow crisis or something or their kid was sick or like you just said. I mean, <laughs> there's just a lot of moving parts with a team of 20 or 30 people that you really can't even understand when you have two or three people, you know. Yeah. But yeah. To, to sp- more specifically, I mean, when you really started to, to get legs on your business, you guys grew pretty quick. Um what do you what do you think was the the biggest couple contributing factors to just the sales growth in general, like the marketing side? Because we're going to talk a little bit about the new book that you've just released, uh, the the marketing book. Uh, but you know, going back in time, no one taught you didn't have a marketing book. When did you have a light bulb moment? What was it 
And, and why was it so important for your growth? The light bulb moment occurred for me the very, very, very first day I put out my first marketing piece and decided to, to make a thing of this. I went home, went in my dad's basement, fired up the old uh, Dell PC, cranked out this little flyer, printed it out. One hour later, I was out putting the flyers out. Spent an hour doing that. I got home. There was a message on my answering machine from this nice lady named Karen that said, hey, come give me a quote for my windows. I want to book an appointment right now. And I was like, whoa, whoa. I just worked for two hours and this lady calls and wants to give me 200 bucks. It absolutely blew my mind and it instantly clicked. You put flyers in someone's neighborhood, you're going to get calls. And it kind of all sort of took off from there. You know, you put out an offer, people will call and you just got to sell them. Well, and actually you bring up a key differentiator between marketing and sales, right? So (laughs) a lot of guys get confused, but what you did with the flyer is you created a phone call generator, a mechanism by which to generate phone calls. But then you still had to go meet with Karen or Carol, or whatever you said her name was, and then in the book, The Job, right? Why is it that some small businesses struggle with this or they have the idea that this stuff doesn't work or it's not for them or their market's different? I hear it all the time. You know, they'll, they'll do some direct mail. They'll do something a little here, a little there, maybe some smorgasbord marketing, but they never get anywhere near the type of growth that you got. What kind of things did you do differently, do you think? I I was extremely, extremely persistent. I saw the direct correlation between putting the marketing piece out, getting the call, and getting the money. And I stayed on it. And I watched the metrics. I was relentless. I started by putting out 100 flyers a day. And then that grew into 250 flyers a day. And then I was running around trying to put out 500 flyers a day until I could start direct mailing people. Then we were putting out... 2,000 direct mail pieces a day. So I just stayed on it and stayed on it and stayed on it. As long as we were getting the return, as long as we were getting the customers, I, I didn't quit. Um, I started I started the business in 1999 and I made like 20 grand that year. That was just me working part-time and alone. And I had started in September. 2003, five years later, we did a million dollars that year. And as I go back and look at it, it's all directly related to the marketing we were putting in place and uh, me running the company and my personal life is super lean so I could just take every single dollar we were making and pump it back into the business. I figured, you know, invest in the company up front. I can live lean. It's no problem. I always have. I don't need to dip into this money. Just more growth, more growth. And uh, that's what I did. Well, I think, <laughs> I think now we're getting to the root of the problem, right? Because... Uh, the majority of people I work with, they suck their business dry, right? They make 100000 in revenue and 50% of it goes in their own pocket so they can you know, pay their mortgage and their bills. Mm-hmm. And I don't think people live lean in enough. Now, I, I do understand not everybody is a young single guy or whatever, um, but there's definitely more opportunity to grow your business faster if you don't choke the cash flow out of it. And I always tell this story, even in my boot camp, I tell the story about you eating bologna sandwiches, <laughs> <laughs> like living in a basement or something when you're doing a hundred thousand a month. I don't think people have like the will, like the discipline to do that. I mean, do you, do you think that that's part of the problem? They just don't reinvest enough of the cash flow back into building the foundation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, m- my, my, situation was unique as you know I was single didn't have a family didn't have kids I had virtually no expenses it was a right for me to live like that but if I had tried this 10 years later when I was married had a couple kids eh, maybe it wouldn't have been so easy to be so lean with the wife breathing down my neck asking for more more money every second uh, I, I didn't have that so so it was easy yeah, and that, and that's true. And I had a family when I started my company, but we we still lived as lean as possible. So I guess the takeaway that I get from it is, you know, you took you went from zero to a million bucks in just a few years, which is just crazy. Uh, one of the other guests I interviewed, Michael Dalkey, he took a business from sixty thousand in revenue to a million in four years. Wow. And the thing is, is it's this isn't rocket science, really, right? I think people have self limiting beliefs; they don't believe it's really possible. But fundamentally and mathematically, the real problem is that they don't have enough dollars to purchase new customers with. Mm -hmm. And so they just can't scale fast enough. That's really the bottom line. So I just appreciate you sharing that because it's just math, right? Yeah, it's just math. And and you could, you know, you can set things up. It it doesn't always need 
every every customer acquisition doesn't have to cost you a ton of money. You know, a direct mail piece is expensive, but once you start developing a little uh, customer base, you know, phone calls to those people, having somebody work your existing client base day in and day out, that's like that's almost free. You know, you have somebody for ten dollars an hour on the phone plus commissions. And, and they're booking you dozens of jobs a day. You, you can't argue with those maths. No, no. And actually, I just put a Facebook post out this week talking about, because this drives me nuts, okay? Little businesses have a tendency to not work their own customer list. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It, there's yeah. even one guy, um, super good business. It's, it's, it's an older business. I'm not going to say too many details, but he has like 7,000 customers. And he doesn't call his customers. Wow. And his business is flat. And they do a ton of revenue. But like when I was talking to him doing a coaching call, it's like, dude, I mean, there's nothing else to talk about until we address this first. This is the number one item. There's nothing else matters until we re-engage all these 7,000 people. Because you could, I believe people could probably double their business just by properly engaging and working their current customer list in a lot of cases. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. If I was that guy, I would immediately... Uh, set those people up to be called twice a year. I'd mail them four, four by six postcards per year. And he would see, I guarantee you, 50% growth the next year. Yeah. I mean, he, those types of businesses are the ones that sophisticated investors try to find because mm-hmm. that's a perfect acquisition for the right guy. Because if I find a good business that has a good reputation with decades of being in the local community and they have thousands of customers and they don't work their list, I can buy that business and make a huge return on my investment almost right away. I mean, because if you're not leveraging that, I, people just don't understand the power in engaging your customers. You know, people have the <laughs> memory of a goldfish. They forget about you. You got to call them, bug them. You got to call to book them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, it costs, it costs two, three times as much to bring a new customer in the door than it does to get an old one back. It's, it's so simple. Plus, you already have all their data. You don't need to go reestimate it. You don't have to ask them a bunch of questions. You just look at the past history and you get them back on the schedule. Boom, you're on to the next one. Yep, absolutely. I call it the low hanging fruit. You know, the, for, in my business, you know, current customers are low hanging fruit. The the way that you ask for referrals is low hanging fruit. Like most people just do that wrong, and that's something else we, you could comment on in a second. Uh, you know, targeting the areas around where you're already at is low hanging fruit. You know, knocking on the doors or flying like five rounds, for example. Mm-hmm. There's certain things you can do that cost almost nothing that will produce immediate return on your investment if you just do them every day. Absolutely. Just got to be consistent with it. Well, you know, now you're not in the window cleaning game per se. You sold your company. You've you've made an exit, which is cool. I did that too. And it's not about money. It's about just like doing it. It's just like, wow, I built something that didn't exist and someone else paid me money for my thing, my little machine that I built. And I know that's a cool experience and, and that you've went through that same process. But you're on to new, bigger and better things. And one of those things is the huge convention, which... I've been to uh, a couple times. Last year, my baby girl was born the day of the convention. So that didn't work out. I missed Howard Partridge and all that stuff. And everybody said it was great. Um, So first of all, tell us about the convention. Why did you start this event? What's the purpose of it? And why are you so excited about it? Because when we talk privately, I know you're very, very excited for this year's convention. I, I am a big fan of conventions and get togethers. Not so much so people can come and hear a keynote and take classes and see a trade show, but it's really a tremendous opportunity to get together, you know, with a thousand or 750 guys that do the same thing that you do for work every day and just chatting with them. The insights and um, the tidbits that you can pick up from just a few conversations is absolutely amazing. I attended my first convention uh, probably a little over 10 years ago. It was an IWCA convention in Atlanta, and I went there specifically to hear Michael Gerber speak. I had just kind of gotten turned on to his E-Myth book, and I went to that convention and heard him speak, and I got in the room. At this point, I had only maybe like two or three trucks going, and I met with guys that had 20 trucks on the road. I met with guys that were doing millions of years, and it millions a year and it instantly clicked wow it's possible other people are doing that and you know on the internet people 
people talk a good game. You don't really know what people are actually doing and how big their business is and how profitable they are. But when you get in a room with them and actually just have a casual conversation with other people that do the same thing as you do every day, it's absolutely amazing. The insights, the stories that you can share, it's, there's, there's nothing like it. Are you looking for a simple way to get more sales, more referrals, and strengthen your customer loyalty? Look no further than sendjim.com. It was handcrafted for you as a powerful tool that will automate your follow-ups after the sale. Imagine being able to stay in contact with your customers all year long by pushing a single button on your smartphone. This is a space age warp speed technology and it will eliminate the chaos inside your business caused by trying to properly follow up with all of your leads and customers. Sign up for a free trial with no credit card required at sendjim.com right now. What are you waiting for? I totally agree. And again, because I talk and work with a lot of businesses, I think the mental the mental stuff is what holds most people back. Like the self-limiting belief. And I, I don't want to sound like a guru. Everybody talks about this weird spiritual, you know, but there's some elements of truth in this stuff. Like the way people don't think it's possible to have the business they want. They don't, they don't really in their heart. I don't think they, it clicks. Like you said, clicks it sometimes until you meet someone face to face and you shake their hand and you're like, Holy crap, this is, this guy's for real. He started with nothing. I mean, I met a guy in a plane, uh, last November, I had to travel to Arizona for some work stuff. And I met this guy on a plane. He's just sitting next to me, casual guy. He founded a, a, a HVAC company in Ohio, has 190 employees. Wow. <laughs> and he just he's just like this little guy. And he's like, yeah, I'm just traveling. I'm speaking at this. I'm like, you know, these people are out there. They're real. And honestly, they genuinely want to help. I know I love helping people. And if, I would have died if I could have had a convention early in my business. Unfortunately for me, I didn't I didn't realize that they even had IWCA conventions back then. But, you know, speaking to the huge convention specifically, because you can have a mental shift when you meet with like minded people for real in real life. Um, what are some things that you're excited about? What makes it a unique event? Because I know there's there's some differences in, in this event compared to other ones. Um, why did you feel the need to start the convention and what's unique about it? Well, my partner Thad and I. Uh, in the convention. We do the PWA together and we do the huge convention together. Uh, We sort of started to become disenfranchised with the existing conventions that were out there. Um, Not the same thing bad about the IWCA or the PWNA, but I've, I've attended all their, you know, all, all their conferences since they, since I went to that first one. And every year it got a little bit worse. And That's not a slam against them or anything like that, but the fact of the matter is these conventions are put together by a group of volunteers and they don't dedicate the time and the energy to curate great speakers, to put together great content because they're busy running their other businesses. You can't fault them for that, but it it just is what it is. The existing convention offerings out there have started to get worse and worse, and On the side, Thad had been putting together this really cool little event uh, in New Orleans, which he just called NOLA, and um, it was the best event of the year. I went to that, and I said, wow, this reminds me of my first convention. Even though there's only 75 people here, this is amazing. We should try to do this on a larger scale, and that's what we did. Um, So we put put a lot of work into it. We only take like like two months off from working on it, and then we're pretty much working on it year-round. Uh, putting together a schedule, curating great speakers, and putting together a nice program and a nice high-end hotel for people. A nice nice experience. We try to make it in a location where you can come, you can easily network with other people, you can hear uh, great presenters, and you can also bring the family. We always make sure to put it in an area where there's um, a lot of family activities so people can make a trip of it and bring the wife and bring the kids and a lot of people do do that. And the main difference between our convention and other conventions is we don't focus on anything about how to clean a window, how to do any type of pressure washing or house washing. You're not going to find information at our convention on those technical aspects of doing the work. It's 100% solely focused on the building building aspects of a business. That is my favorite part about the whole thing. That is the reason that the huge convention 
is working at a, and just because you're a humble guy, this thing is blowing up, man. It's already, I think it's already the largest convention of its kind ever. And it's only a few years old. And the reason is, is because there's, there's, there's like no, there's such a huge need for the business side and everybody's obsessed with the technical side. I talked to my friend, uh, Michael yesterday and he spoke at one of the IWCA conventions. And, uh, the reason he spoke was because of frustration. Like he's not even like the speaker guy. He doesn't sell a book. He doesn't do anything. He's got a multi-million dollar business. He went to the convention a few years ago and he said, there's a panel of like six people sitting there for an hour talking about self-cleaning glass and some sort of <laughs> technical thing. And he's like, why am I listening to this? Like, why am I here? Because learning about the PSI and the pH level of the thing and the, that's not going to grow your business. Being technically perfect, that's great. Shop talk's great, but it has nothing to do with growing your business. It's just ego-based. But the huge convention is about marketing, scaling, systems, employees, how to convert better, how to sell more, how to drive top-line growth, how to you know leverage better equipment to get a better ROI, all that stuff. That is what gets me excited. And and that is, I think, yeah. the big differentiator, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you know that, that's why we did it. You know, early, early on in my window cleaning business, I, I realized that there was people out there my competitors were mainly on, mainly focused on. I can clean the best window. I'm the best window cleaner in town. I I'm so fast. I can clean so many windows a day. I won't leave a streak. But you know what? That that's nice and everything. That's really surface level. That's that's really basic. But the majority of people that go out of business each year, it doesn't happen because they left some streaks and they weren't a great window cleaner. It happens because they suck at business. People people get totally hung up on you know the technical aspect of how to how to clean a window or how to wash this where in reality the thing that's really important is all the other stuff behind it building a functional systemized business that operates on its own that spits off revenue like you wouldn't believe that that's the important stuff that's that's what sustains that's what makes a company great is its business infrastructure and its systems yeah, and it's what creates a real asset for you and your family. It's what makes it sellable. It's what makes it enjoyable. It's 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 it can create a lifestyle business for you. Now, me, I live in Costa Rica. Lots of people don't care about living in Costa Rica, but maybe you do care about being a T-ball coach or being able to, you know, coach your kids' soccer team or being able to go fishing every Friday and Saturday and Sunday. I don't know. There's no wrong answer, but if you don't understand the business side, the mechanics, the executive type mechanical structures inside your business. If you don't look at the metrics and the numbers and the data, if you don't measure and track and iterate and all that stuff, then you can't ever have that lifestyle business. And, and, and you're not even building an asset anyway, because it's totally reliant on you. And I know you, that's what Mark, Michael Gerber probably opened up in your mind. And I'm assuming, cause you're obsessed with systems, Chris, was that the moment when you said, Holy crap, system, system, systems. And you just dove in was after you heard him. I heard that and it blew my mind. I instantly became totally immersed in systems and systemizing everything. I realized after hearing him speak, like, you know, we, we kind of just go out there and do whatever we want to do every day and we're, we're training people that are coming in via the tribal method. There's no, there's no actual real training programs in place. We have no, uh, financial, no real financial procedures. We have no real systemized marketing procedures. And I heard that. And I implemented it, and within a couple months, everything changed, everything. Now, hey guys, you've heard me talk about my small business bootcamp, which is located at automategrowcell.com. And hey, here's the deal. We just had our first 50 students begin the initial launch of the bootcamp, and the feedback is unbelievable. We're talking life-changing for a lot of these guys. If you are looking for a way to automate, grow, and build a business that could be sold, this is what you need. It's step-by-step, -step, over 50 videos, all shot in code. Costa Rica, dedicated specifically to helping get you across the finish line. For more information, just give it a quick peek. Go look at some of the video testimonials. Just visit automategrowcell.com right now. Yep, same thing for me. You know, I, I had uh, went on your forum, windowcleaningresource.com. <clears throat> Gajillions of people on there. I'm sure everybody listening already knows about that. But if you don't, uh, Chris is the founder of that. And when I discovered your forum is when I had my light bulb stuff. So my relationship with you goes back quite a long time, even before we ever talked. I was just the creepy guy lurking, reading all the threads, <laughs> you know, reading all the posts, just like what? And it's like, you don't know what you don't know. But I just consumed 
information for months. I mean, I had fights with my wife because I was in the basement reading forum posts. I didn't overly comment. But I was reading and learning, and and that's when my light bulb slowly went on. You know, and some of Kevin Dabrowski stuff too. But this stuff really does work, guys. And it took my business from doing like eight thousand a month to doing one hundred and eighty thousand a month. And it's not because I'm smart. I went to college for about two seconds. I stopped by right the community college. I gave it a look, and then I just carried moving on my mosey way. Um, but it's because systems are like math, and business systems when they're set up correctly will make your business grow. It's, it's just, it's like gravity. It just works. So anyway, the huge convention, it's going to, it's going to help with all that. Plus, like you said, the networking, the meeting like-minded individuals, unbelievable opportunity. And from what I'm hearing, they're probably going to be close to a thousand people at this thing. Is that right? Yeah, that, that's what the prediction is now. Um, last year we had 700 and, well, no, excuse me, we had 608 paid attendees and we had about 165 vendors there independently. So that was floating somewhere in the uh, you know, 750 attendee range, and tickets are selling like wildfire this year. So we anticipated hitting about a thousand. Well, I'm excited to do it. And you know, let's move in and talk a little bit about your book because I don't. You've never written a book before, right? Is this your first one? I, I it is actually. But before we get to that, um, maybe maybe we can tell the people that that you officially are going to be the keynote at this year's huge convention. Well, okay, okay, we can. It's been kind of a secret, but yeah. hey, everybody, I'm the keynote at this year's convention. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so honored and excited to do it, and uh, it's nerve-wracking because, you know, my job is to deliver tremendous value to the people that paid money and dra- dragged themselves to Washington, D.C. in the hopes to get a return on their investment, right? And yeah. like Chris said, the convention's about networking and all the breakout sessions and everything, but the keynote is the thing that's going to kick it off, and I plan on delivering huge. I'm already preparing for it months in advance. And really, I just want to inspire people to build the business that they want to serve their family the way that they want. I mean, my passion is family and, and having priorities and balance in your life and also understanding the power of automation and systems. So if anything I can do to inspire you is going to be packed into my keynote, it's going to be really good. It's going to give it everything I have. And Chris, thank you, you know, for inviting me to do it. Oh, no, thanks. Thanks for doing it. We, uh, we think you're going to be a tremendous choice for it. We, we like everything you do. And uh, we think that your delivery is going to really inspire people for the whole convention. Because the key, like as you said, the keynote is what kicks off the entire tone of the event. It's the very first thing that happens after registration. Everybody is in one room. There's tons of energy, tons of excitement. It's electric and it really really sets sets the whole convention off on a on a positive note. So we're we're just so happy to have you. Well, thank you again. And the thing is, Chris, for me, because I had such humble beginnings, because I started my business with a Chevy Cavalier and a ladder on the roof, and I know you had nothing to, you had your dad's Dell computer and a printer. I understand how hard it is for people to take the risk to buy tickets, book a hotel room, drive across the country. I freaking get it. Like I legit get it. I mean, it is one of those things where a lot of guys with smaller businesses, it's They want to go. Of course they want to go, but they're scared. They're scared to invest in it. And and make no mistake, everybody listening, this is an investment in your business. I mean, if you didn't hear what Chris said, he invested to go hear Michael Gerber speak at a convention, and it blew his business up. You know, these things are investments, and you will get a return on your investment. So I'm humbled because my job is to help during that, you know, that window when I speak, make sure that we start off on the right foot so that everybody gets a good return on their investment. And being that I came from nothing, from Flint, Michigan, and had such a great business, and it was automated. I only worked four or five hours a week on it for the last two years. I had it. I sold it. Uh, I got a great exit out of it living down here. Like, I think when people meet me in real life, they'll realize, okay, this is really true. This is real. I can do it too. I can achieve what I want to achieve too. And that's the most exciting. You know, I want to push people to take that little risk and to make the investment in themselves and go. So let me say, uh, let me just say one more thing about uh, the cost aspect of the convention and actually you know, investing back in yourself. Uh, a, a lot of conventions and get-togethers out there now. There's a trend where it's actually like a free event to attend, and um, you know we decided you know to charge a hundred bucks a ticket for this, and it wasn't so much really for uh, a, a revenue generating stream. It was more so 
the people that were going to attend were going to really take it seriously. And although it's a big investment to get there, you know, you have hotel, you have food, you have travel, you have your ticket to get in the door. There is a multitude of ways to do the convention on the cheap. If you check out our blog on the huge convention.com website, the huge convention.com slash news, we put up a lot of tips there and how people can actually make this an affordable, memorable trip for themselves. Yeah, that's actually a good point because I have my new boot camp out and it's a two thousand dollar thing, right? That's a that's that's not cheap. I know it's expensive. I made it expensive on purpose because the first fifty people we sold into that boot camp, they are a certain type of person. They're serious. They're ready to grow. They're motivated. They're focused, right? And and they're stepping out on a limb of faith. But guess what? Everybody in that group is all doing the same thing. And that is the atmosphere at the huge convention. It's it's a whole bunch of people who give a crap about their business. They're not showing up so they can get a free squeegee. They're showing up so they can learn and network on how to grow their stinking business. That is a huge differentiator. It's huge. I don't don't take it lightly because if anybody can just come to it, everything would be different about it. There has to be some skin in the game, mm -hmm. and I agree with you 100%. There, there has to be a little bit of scarcity built into it where it, you have to contribute something to be able to get in a room full of these types of people, uh, and it's, it's worth 100 times more than the stupid $100 it costs. And like you said, if you're on a budget, you have months to prepare for this. Make it happen. Go on a shoestring. Just show up. Uh, two years ago, Chris, I met Louis Rees, and I know that he'll be comfortable with sharing this with you because he always gives me great testimonials and stuff, but he showed up at the convention going to quit the business. In fact, the, the money he spent on the ticket was like the last money they had. His wife was super ticked off that he even did it initially, and they go, and, and he's kind of like moping around, and I meet this guy. He was doing like two or $300 a month in cleaning. Like he had passed out like 2,000 flyers and got no calls and everything was just <laughs> not working for him. So, you know, I took him under my wing a little bit. I ended up working with him over the course of the next year or so. Got him my window wealth material, got him, you know, some of my materials and did some coaching, you know, just for free. I just like, I had a heart for this guy. I'm like, Louie, you, you don't get it. We can fix this. So you have a business here. Anyway, long story short. Because of that connection, I mean, he he did over a hundred thousand last year, and this is only two years later, nice. and he already has a hundred thousand pre booked for twenty sixteen, <laughs> and it's and it's only you know wow. and that was like in February. So the point is, it's like the mentality, this little mental shifts you can get out of just these interactions by meeting that one person who can help you or, or teach you something. These little nuggets are worth like huge multiples in your business when you apply them. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm very glad to see Louis succeeding. He's actually a, a great customer of ours. And I can tell by his orders over the past couple of years that things are really picking up for him. So that's great to hear. Yeah. And you know what? He did it. I mean, no one's going to come save your day, guys. He showed up. He took a risk. He spent his last hundred bucks or whatever. He showed up. He's crushing it now. He landed this hotel account worth like 60 grand. I mean, he worked it for wow. a year. I helped him through the whole process. Louis is... The perfect avatar for who this convention's for. Yeah. It's absolutely. not for everybody doing 10 million. They already know what to do. It's for the guys who are flat. They're stuck at 300,000. They're stuck at 60,000. They can't get it past half a million. There's something not working. They don't know what it is. You got to show up and you're going to get the answers to your questions and it will change everything in your business. Um, so I'm I'm excited, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you again. I'm thank you again. I'm getting pumped up now. I feel like I should be standing up on one of those standing desks instead of sitting, <laughs> <laughs> like John Lee Dumas has, you know. But I would feel so weird doing that. Um, so about your book, you you never wrote a book before, and then your first book is this mega, and you sent me an advanced copy, and I went through the whole thing. This thing is ridiculous. It's like so it? huge and. Well, I love it. I think yeah, it, yeah. I, I didn't really know what to expect. I knew you would have a good product. I knew you would, but it's so deep. Like it's so long. It's so well organized. So just like the, you put an index in the thing. It's just the content, the, the graphics, the downloads, the links, everything's logical. It's easy to consume. I mean, you have, uh, it's just packed full of examples and everything. So I don't know how long this took you to make, but I'm guessing a really, really long time because it's just very, very deep. So why did, why did you make this? How hard was it to make? <laughs> Are you glad that you made it? What's the feedback been so far? I know you just launched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, feed, the feedback's been great. Uh, I've gotten nothing but positive comments from the people that have purchased it. I've been chatting with them, you know, walking them f f through a few of the concepts that are in there. 
And um, so far, it's you know, it's only been out for a week. I haven't really promoted it much, but it's doing very, very well. I couldn't be happier with the results. Um, I for the past couple of years, I've sort of like had in my mind that I may want to write a book about the window cleaning business in general, and I wasn't really sure what what to talk about. And uh, last last October, I was going to the ISSA convention in Las Vegas. And I sat down on the plane and I just uh, mind mapped out, you know, like 20 possible topics to write about. And I kept coming back to marketing because that's kind of my thing. That's what I specialize in. That's what I like. That's what I love. And um, I intended it to be much smaller than this, just kind of like a little general overview marketing pamphlet. And I ended up putting about six months into it and it just kept growing. It kept growing. And ultimately, it's been distilled down to what's about 150 different ways somebody can successfully market their window cleaning business. And these are these are things you've actually done, measured, absolutely iterated and tweaked, and succeeded with. Yeah, like, this isn't theory. You did this. Yeah, and I, I say that right in the beginning of the book. Everything that's in here, 99 percent of what's in here, I have used with success. If it totally sucked and it bombed. I, I wrote about that in the chapter of marketing methods not to use. <laughs> uh, so literally every, everything in here is things that I have used with success in the past. And it, it walks through, through all. And so I called it the blueprint because it's like literally this step-by-step guide. And um, it starts off with just like a little background on myself. And then I get into – how somebody can do a really thorough market analysis, do market research of their area, determine where to market. And then I roll into some best practices that all window cleaners should be doing in their business. 21 things. If you do these things, you're, you're almost guaranteed success. And then from there, I just jump straight into it. Um, and we talk about marketing on the phone, uh, website marketing, uh, email marketing, social media marketing, uh, review marketing, paid traffic, transactional paperwork, uh, print, newspapers, phone books, four by six cards, and the EDDM manual, direct sales letters, <sighs> things you can do uh, super on the cheap, you know, on the job site and around town, word of mouth marketing, referral systems, networking. And uh, I covered it all. I, I covered everything I ever did in my window cleaning business over the 13 years. I, I walk you through step by step by step how to do each item. I don't just say, hey, this would be a fun, probably good thing for you to do. I, I give you the, the pros and cons of each thing and show you literally step by step how you can do and implement these things in your business on the cheap. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm skimming through it even as you're talking because – <laughs> the thing is massive. It, it, it's just shy of 300 pages. And that doesn't include all the downloads and the digital resources. You have links to like a gajillion different, you know, technology assets that people can use or look into and websites and how to automate stuff and just everything. And then what was really cool that I didn't expect was the index at the back, which was like, I don't really know how you'd build an index with other than just ridiculous labor intensive, like, that's insane. So it's really cool how you have that because the index itself is super deep. So you can go through here and, and pick something in the index like, okay, rain guarantee. Boom. It references the page, page number. You're back where you need to be. Phone scripts. Boom. You're back where you need to be. Pay-per-click. You know, EDDM stuff. Pricing theories. The presentation. All this stuff. It just goes on and on and on and on. I don't want to bore people on the podcast with every single thing, but super deep product. Really good stuff. Um, where can people get a copy of it. Is it on the uh, shop WCR or where, where do they go? Uh, that's, it can be found on our, our, our new website, windowcleaner.com. We just launched that a couple of weeks ago and you can go over there. You can snag a free chapter of it, download it, see what you think, make sure it's right for you. Uh, you can get an overview of everything that's included in the book. It actually comes with 46 different downloads and marketing pieces. This is 99% fresh content. Um, so you're, you know, this isn't like a repeat of what you would see in the WCRA or anything like that. Um, it's about 23 different marketing materials and then, um, 23 business assets and planning templates, all my phone scripts, uh, updated, um, marketing budgets, regular budgets, um, 
ROI calculators. It has everything. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's not something that they have to read in a weekend. It's a lot of businesses just need a couple of nuggets out of here, apply them this spring. They'll make their money back the first week they, they apply something from it. And then it's just, it's like a reference manual. That's how I look at it. It's a reference manual. So for us, I know in our webinar we did last, last uh, fall, you talked about how you build a marketing calendar, right? So this book, it helps you understand you know, what to put on the calendar and where to put it and, and what things to focus on, what things to avoid, what's worked for you. And it, I, to me, it's like a reference guide, like a physician's desk reference. This is the window cleaner's marketing desk reference or something. You know, It's just a good guide, especially with that index, because again, you can, you can zip right into the spot you need, refresh yourself, grab the appropriate download, which is linked right in the PDF, um, the names of all of them. Um, it's a beautiful thing. So good job, man. Cool. Cool. And that, uh, marketing calendar that you did, uh, reference, I actually, that's one of the downloads. I created a a whole marketing plan and calendar for somebody that they can use over the course of the year. And it's extremely comprehensive. Awesome. Well, that's really good stuff, Chris. You're doing a lot. You've done a lot for the industry and you know, the the industry has changed a lot because people coming in now, they have access to all this material, all the business building stuff. Like this stuff didn't exist like a decade ago. It, it was just in its infancy, and you've really shaped a lot of businesses. And I'm I'm one of them, and it, that's the truth. That's just the truth. Your forum helped me tremendously, and the networking. So you have a knack for bringing people together with the forum and with the huge convention, and even with this book so, and the Facebook group. So um, I think that might be your thing, Chris. Marketing is your thing, but also building communities is your thing. And that does help people and it changes things. So I want to thank you for that personally. Thank you for spending time with me again today. Hopefully this will be the second most listened to episode and people got value. (laughs) Hopefully people get value out of it uh, because that's really what I want to happen at the end of the day. So everybody take care. Uh, Chris, we can reach you at windowcleaningresource.com or is it better just to go to windowcleaner.com as we're migrating everything to that? Windowcleaner.com is our new home on the internet. You will see... Our uh, family of 10 other websites start to migrate everything there over the course of the next year. We're slowly bringing it over with a domain name, That Great Josh, How Could I Not? It is very good. And I got to remind myself (laughs) that that's the new thing. So windowcleaner.com and uh, everything you need will be there if you need to reach Chris or check out his book or at least get the free chapter because that's just a no-brainer. So thanks, Chris. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate you having me on. Hey, thanks for hanging out, friends. And from all of us here at the Quick Talk Podcast team, we hope you love today's show. We hope that you were inspired to become a doer and not just a listener. Apply what you've heard today in your own business and watch things change for the better. Lastly, remember that all the money in the world can't save your soul. Seek first the kingdom of God, my friends. We'll see you next time. For more information about the Quick Talk Podcast or Joshua's other businesses, visit our website, quicktalkpodcast.com. Have a blessed day.